Hello everyone, Xenon and Zoomers are here, and, well, this is a, a video by, um, honestly, only making because I want to have my thoughts in a video that I can just look back on fondly, which is about this game. Pokemon Legends Arceus. I want to put my thoughts out on how I feel about it, but also talking about. So, if you guys are going to use this as, uh, oh, how do you think? How do you feel about getting the game? Uh, if you just want that answer, I think the game's good. Do I think it's amazing? No. Are there better games? Yeah. But does this mean this one is bad? No, far not. So. I'll be quickly talking about each part of the game. Gameplay first, then story and characters. There's a well before that probably graphics, but you get what I'm go going with it. So, uh, gameplay, it's still mostly the same Pokemon format. You go about catching Pokemon, there's types, there's advantages and disadvantages, but the new gimmick of this game is that you can catch Pokemon outside of battle like I tried to show and that there's also the agile and strong strong move system which I really like it's really good it, it's actually the first time that got me to think tactically like right now I'm facing two Geodude what should I do? well I'm going to use Agile style to try and get an extra move but if I don't, oh well uh, other changes to the system is that sleep's been changed to drowsy so it's basically para paralysis which Sucks since sleep was good and didn't need changing. Frozen was changed to frostbite, which I think is better. And the new status is one of them is ba basically small screen from PMD. It accepts that it doesn't guarantee moves miss. And instead, it's just, oh, you've got a high chance of missing. Uh, other things to add are, uh, trying to worry myself, warm myself better, because I'm just I am not managing to put my words properly. Uh Damn it. What was I trying to say? <laughs> oh, this is what unscripted video was do to you. But keep sharing your toes.
Uh, because it's all out of mine. Uh, that was gameplay. I, I liked totally. Uh, I guess we talk about how the overworld traversing is. It's mostly good. I like the concept of certain Pokemon being more aggressive. And others not. Not some fleeing, some... Yeah, you know. And it's, it gives more per personality to the Pokemon. Even just small things. Granted, it makes Togepi very terrifying, which is hilarious. No, I did not why I out to a Togepi. I do know someone who did, which was hilarious. Uh, the Pokemon that help you traverse the world, honestly, mostly great. I kind of wish Bravery was an actual flight instead of being what it was. I landed under your head. Anyways, uh, pardon me, sorry. Yeah, even even healing moves get more powerful. Um, but the, the new, but one of the blah, 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 blah. words work. Uh, the new system outwardly, like walking about, and all that is like distortions just space time distortions how do i feel about them well i sort of like like them but i kind of wish there was more of a way to figure out when they're getting close so when you're only needing a pokemon from there like cranidos you can get it. Um, and I, I like how evolution is handled in this game to a degree. It's a bit weird, but in a way, it's got worse in universe. But getting to choose when you can evolve them is better, honestly. Even if it is a bit weird, since I'm forgetful. Uh, I am being like, evolution I am being like, oh yeah, all of them are be 
basically stones. It's great. Uh, the new Pokemon are great, but screw trying to evolve Ursa Luna. Game Freak, stop making these evolutions. Guy dang it. Especially if they have so many goddamn requirements. Seriously. Uh, Ursa Luna, you acquire to get it, you need to get an Ursa ring, understandably, go to the place called the Ursa, the Ursa ring, have a pedal block, go to it at night, and finally, Finally, make sure there is a full moon. Like, what? How many conditions do you need? One or two is a bit crazy, but fine. We've had crazy, like in K. But that many? Ugh. Uh, Pokemon now no longer now remember all their moves and you can select which four they can use in battle really good and honestly much better than the move reminder Jesus this is an alpha I'll talk about alpha Pokemon soon. Uh, then I can't guess. Then there's just the final two things, which is noble Pokemon and alpha Pokemon. Uh, I should probably talk about alpha first, first, because the noble Pokemon are bosses essentially. Oh yeah. Also. There are many trainer battles in the game, so I'm not too sour about the experience share the way it is in this game, even if I don't like its Dale using sword and shields. Uh, Our Pokemon are Pokemon that are over the max size because Pokemon can come in different sizes now. But they can go over the max size of a Pokemon. And that and that is the Big difference, Prince. You can see outwardly. Now, if you were to ignore that and look at what they can can do, they actually have some unique moves that they can learn. That's normally not their kin can't, which is cool, but also makes it a little bit irritating. And then noble Pokemon, noble Pokemon, yeah. Uh, Noble Pokemon are basically the boss fights of this game. 
You find him in arena, in arenas, Ugh. and you literally have to evade them, weaken them with throwing bombs, and hoping the, depending on which one it is, somehow stun themselves. Uh, how do I find them? They're fun. They're fun. They're like, they're not great, since they can be tedious, and that's at the least. But are they bad? No. Uh. Graphic was it's mostly mostly fine. Like there are a few kinks and slowdowns at times, but it's like it's so negligible that it's like all right. So what? If you complain about it, you're an idiot, honestly. Because like. You're missing the point. Graphics aren't everything. Frame my guys. If they were, I'm quite sure I could find the most pretty but so unoptimized game ever. And it wouldn't matter. It's all about how it's presented. And honestly, Legend of Arceus presents it fine. Uh, Dex wise, uh, it's, it's a little short, I won't lie. But considering the Pokedex has other things for you to do, it, you don't feel like your job is ever done. And that's, that's fine. To me, I feel like we should be given a bit more. But like, even then, I mostly find it fine. It's like, would I wish there was more? Yeah! I've caught every Pokeball one, so it's like, I'd rather there be something. But I'll talk about that later. Uh, but now, I'm going to talk about the character's story. story. I recommend, if you haven't played the game, or haven't been the main story, story, turn off the video, and go play. It's good. I recommend you'll enjoy. I'll, I see you seriously. Think you'll. Anyone who likes it, this style, like what they're seeing, you'll enjoy it. So. So, the story and the characters. Well, you start off. Uh, you start off being talked to by God. No, I'm not joking. Sorry. And you make a character. But then you drop down of a hole in the sky and uh, this is where my first few problems start to come in. And how compared to how I thought you just someone who was 
taking from the future to solve the past problems. And it's like, really? I would have rather something else that we were from this time or something. At least that's how I felt at first. Afterwards, it's like, all right, it's not bad, but it still feels like a cop out. Uh, the rest, you wake up on the beach, have the stories in front of you. Professor Lavington comes up, asks if you're okay. You say you are, and you answer his questions. After that, you go and meet the. You go and catch the po Pokemon for him. Then you go to Jubilife Village. Everyone hates you. And then you finally. Like, meet. I. I. I did say your rival because she doesn't do anything, really. She battles you like twice, requiredly. And doesn't even get a, a full team in post game. No, I'm not joking. Joking. Uh, you of course, then told by the captain of the galaxy team that if you don't pass her test. You're sent out to the village, and if you die, it's not their fault. Which becomes ironic because they're one of their attendants. Gee, I wonder. Uh, but then you, then Professor Hamilton gives you. Your first Pokemon. Out of them, I prefer Oshawa, but that might be because Samara is a water dark type in this game. Which, if you don't know, I really like dark types. So I might be biased. Uh, but yeah. You manage to catch them, you join the galaxy team, you meet Professor Ruin's ancestor. He challenges you to a battle. Not a Pokemon battle. An actual fight. You lose. Spectacularly. And you're properly joined in. The uh next day you are then introduced to the two leaders of the Diamond Pearl Clans. Iridia, leader of the Pearl Clan, and Adamin, the leader of the Diamond Clan. They argue. You then go to Commando Zav's office and you are told about the friends Pokemon going frenzy, told to help out, and your first Pokemon you have to deal with with a similar phenomenon is a Kukachu, which is which is cry written out is Yes! I, I love how uh, Game Freak at least acknowledged that meme. And as I showed, uh, Lord of the Woods, still bigger than Alpha Cleavor. Two times bigger. Insane. But shows, these guys are in the class of the road. Uh, 
Uh, then, of course, your task, you're given your flute, your Celestica flute, flute, I believe, and then task to quell this guy, Cleavor. Cleavor and ends up being your first lord that you have to quell. You quell Cleavor, Cleavor after figuring out a solution and after fighting the warden of Cleaver and proving to Rydia. But yeah, no, you're not a bad guy. You may be a weirdo, but you're not a bad guy. Uh, after that, you're told to go to the mire. The mire, you get to see, talk about, you get to see Arasu before you go, before, when, when you wake up that day. But you also get a meet while you're trying to find a way to lay the rage. Another another warden who is a woman who is very stuck on in her ways. You managed to get the table back, batch. The ruins she was in is missing. And you meet the misfortune gang. If you meeting Clover, Coin and Charm, I believe. Weird names. You then bring it back, have to fight Ursula Luna, who is one of the rides that is honestly kind of pointless. Less, more because they're only used for finding finding things and once you've done all the quests that require you to find someone their role is practically gone thanks to space-time distortions uh, Uh, after that, you're then tasked to find Darazu, the Warden of the Lady of the Ridge. And you find her. You find she sprains her, sprained her ankle because she tried to do everything herself. And then you fight the Lady of the Ridge. Yeah, not much goes on, but the villagers start to be much more open at this point. At Cleaver, they're accepting. After that, they start being friendly, much more friendly. Then you're tasked to sort out a disturbance in the coast, because there is no lord there. Weird. Alright. You go out, you then find out from Iridia. 
Where is that? I read that. That the Lord is dead. Quite a like slap in the face, being like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna save this Lord," and then it turns out, no, he died. Died before you got there. Died before you even you knew he existed. So of course, instead, you're tasked with finding the Warden of the Lord and to see the ward, the Warden's, the Lord's son. So you find her and she's at the grave of the dead Lord, who was revealed, drowned, saving his son. A way to go. Especially when you find an Arcanine or Fire and Rock type. Yeah. It's. Oof. Of course, she then uh, asks you can you tell which one it is? I picked right because the quiet one makes more sense. Because they're in morning. At least in my my eyes. Uh, the then she's she then you tell her about her, you're trying to get to Fire Spit Isle, and she says she can help you but a scan of the diamond clan can because he can call basculation so you go up meet Matt Iskisson who tells you well shakily tells you but you need a dust squaps that has dark pulse to call basculation why? It's not explaining why Dusclops with Dark Pulse specifically. Like, it's a. He says it tastes better for Basculation, but doesn't explain why Dusclops specifically. I, I don't get it either. Of course, you get it. You match call Basculation. Then the misfortune gang appears. The misfortune gang take the wrong Growlithe. Cause they, of course, they do. Then they try and follow the, evolve it there. And evolve it at uh, Fire Spit Isle. Of course, they fail. You beat them. And then the Sun of the Lord evolves. Yeah, it evolves there. So then you got to quell the new Lord because they get zapped by lightning and frenzied. So, yeah. With that, that, of course, after you do that, you get some heartfeltness, as well as the spirit of the old lord letting out a cry, which is weird and creepy. And then you go to, then you go, then you wake up the next morning after reporting what happened to Kamado. And you see, as a friend poo, a raggy old man, a raggy man 
in a raggedy trench coat. If you actually know who he is, you'll realize that's Ingo. Yes, Ingo from Black and White. Not an ancestor. Actually, they. Actually, there. I thought that was a pivot. So sorry. I don't know why. But why is it there? Well, turns out he's a follower. Like you. But. <laughs> I meant to throw a Pokeball, not slap it in the face. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, you meet Armin and Kamado at the at Kamado's office. Office, but not the warden of the next area, but not the warden of the next lord, the Lord of the Hollow. That's because ugh, it's Mally, the worst character in the game. He's an asshole. There's no way to it. He's just unlikable. Ah! He doesn't have anything redeeming in my opinion. He's just that unlikable. Alright, I could probably quickly talk. Uh, yeah, don't throw Pokemon down from ledge. Just, just sometimes it just does not initiate battle. But back to story. Millie is so convinced that the frenzy that Electrode is in is good for him, even though it's suffering. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't get it. when Adam himself says, "Oh no, Electro's suffering. Stop. Help us." And he goes, "Nah. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you're, you're, you're in the bad way." But, you go, you meet Ingo there. Ingo, then leads you into Wayward Cave, which isn't as bad as Diamond and Pearl and Platinum and Diamond and yeah, you get it. But, it also, so it is pitch dark because Melee decided to take the tortures. But you get to talk to Ingo, which is nice. And it's so sad because you hear from Ingo that he has faint memories, not only of his brother Emmett, which is already sad, but of his partner, Chandelou, which is like, oh, imagine just faintly remembering someone you work with for your whole life and then just finding out that you can't exactly remember them because you got sucked into a wormhole one day. It's just oof. You you you, you can't help but feel a little bad. Uh 
but yeah. You managed to make it out. Melly keeps interfering. But you managed to get to where Electrode is after beating Melly again. And he faints forgetting. And Adamant comes in to rescue. Because God, I was about to strangle Melly. Seriously, if I could kill him, I would. I hate him that much. Like, he's unlikable. Da! But after that, it's like smooth, smooth sailing. And you are then told to go to the Alabas Tundra, where you meet Garrick, who, while is like Nelly, at least he has more of a point because Lord Avalog has done nothing wrong. So, why interfere? Seriously. If he does eventually harm Pokemon, sure. But it's also, Garrick's also more accepting, but it may be for the best. Of course, you battle him. And she talks about maintaining a, a highly body but then you're told oh yeah you you, you, you need you need brave hour because even Steezler can't get up there oh yeah uh, Ingo gives you Steezler but then you meet Sabi who I like and dislike Sabi Gives you to run around them. But then you have to go through Snow Point Temple. Because she flew up there. Then you go up there, pass through Puzzle. And then fight Sabi. And then Brave Hair. With Sabi being very confusing. Being real. She, she's so confusing, but so adorable. Um, seriously, if anyone can say that she isn't, I'll be surprised. Anyways, after that, you get the ice you need. I see Gary got there somehow. I don't buy his stick. Of climbing up there and also don't buy a stick of oh yeah I'm diving down on this first thing he should be dead then you end up fighting then you end up fighting Lord Avalog who is a unique fight at least so I can at least say But, after that, everything's saved! Or, that's what it seems like at first. Then the next day, boom! Sky's red. Everyone's panicking, understandably, because the sky turned red. And you visit Kamado, Kamado who then says, yeah, what we did didn't help, even though it did for a moment. And then accuses you of being the cause with no evidence. Now, how bad it is, Irida literally says, says when he asked them if they could prove without a shadow of a doubt that your character didn't do it. Irida says, says you're asking us to prove a negative. You can't prove something the absence 
or something. <laughs> Which, yeah. It's just... Oof. So, of course, you're exiled. And... You talk to Leon. He says he can't help you. Even if he wants to. Too. Same with Mai. The first two ones you meet can't help you. Alexia, Alexia up here and the Shanks come over. Uh, both Alexia are male, which is weird. But hey. And then you meet your good friend, Volo, who, um, who is... Yeah, the reason why I didn't bring him up much is because he just kind of appears and is kind of irrelevant to the plot until now. So, not really much point. Then, he takes you to M Mistress Gogeta, who is an absolute boss, even if we don't see her battle. She's just... You've got to respect her. You've just got to. She then tells you that you need to make the red chain. Yes, the red chain Cyrus used was once used by a player character. Huh. Shows that even the most evil seeming things can be used for good. For good. Uh, of course. Arda and Adman and Selene Zabra appear with you choosing between the two leaders depending on who you choose does affect the story a little bit not by much but it is a bit so Of course, I chose Arilla, so we'll probably talk about Arilla's version. Arilla, we, Arilla, and the player, and Volo, go teach the lakes. Your iPhone then starts acting up, and. Then you end up creating the K face this is somehow. Under tested by each of the lake guardians. Sorry. Each guardian having its own test and then gives you a tablet each. You then go to Miss Gear. Say she tells you to where to go, to go, which is to an area in the coordinate highlands, I believe. You go there, even though we're in the Marylands, I don't know which one. You go there, she comes there, and then the three guardians of the lake end up arriving and giving you the red chain. Yes, you're given it. So, then you go up Mount Coronet. Then you go back to the Jubilee Jib first, first, actually. And you then meet everyone, and it's apparently total chaos. So, so you head up Mount Coronet, and because that's where Commando is. And partly going through through to where Spear Pillar will, will eventually be, be, which is right now called the Cinema Temple. You meet Benny, who has been, as far as you know, just a chef. Eh? So why is he there? Well, it turns out 
So, when he gave us smoke bombs, it's because he's a ninja. No, no, no joking. He is a ninja. And as an ancestor to Wally, of all people. Which is hilarious. But also, like, oh my god. That's badass. Then, you go up, forever after being, being him, and have to challenge Kamado, who is in Galarian, Galarian armor, making him the one confirmed Galarian there, along with Benny, probably, considering Sorry, he has it, so... Which is a bit weird, now that I think about it. You beat him, and then you go up. Depending on who you've chosen, Palkia or Dialga appears. I just read it, so that's how we're going to talk. Palkia appears, you use the retain, you control it, and you go and capture it. Once you capture him, then Palkia speaks to Arida, saying, Oh yeah, another one's coming. And for, obviously, Dio, Dioga, Adamant. And then, Dioga, or Palkia appears. Then, all hell breaks loose, as the Sinner Temple is turned into what would, what would be known as Spear Pillar. Which is honestly interesting. You show to flee, and you end up having to create the very first Origin Ball, which might be the precursor to the Master Ball. The Master Ball, the, with the Origin Ball, you go. And Palkia, you go and fight. Well, the lobster legendary that you have. And find out. Oh, whoops. Find out, like Giratina, they have an origin form that looks kinda like Arceus. Which. It's scary. So you have to fight them like a noble Pokemon. After doing their magic to weld them down to nothing, you then throw the origin ball and you're guaranteed to capture them. Then, credit roll. So, that's the main story, but the story doesn't end there. If you are still doing post game, I recommend you now turn off the video. Actually, no, wait, wait. At post game, if you have the DLC, you can get, pop, get Darkrai and Shaman. With Quest, you can get the Origin Forms of Palki and Dialga. And if you know the secret of the, the Sea Prince, Prince Legend, then you can do the Seas, the Seas Legend, Jin Quest, and get Fiona and Manaphy. P, which, if you want the answer, it's Buizel, Man Tyke, and Overquill. If you get all three of them in the party, you then can challenge uh, uh, the 
you can the of course now you can turn off the video do you if you haven't done post game because I recommend you do it post game Arvan the trickster trio, trio Landorus, Ternes and Thunderous getting another part part of the trio now becoming a quartet There is also so, story. Volo asks, basically asks you to go collect the rest of the plates. Of course, you agree, and after being a Vesper Queen, you get one of the plates, and you go to Miss Kokia and see and talk about her. Find if we find all the plates. You're then told about Cresselia, Regigigas, Heatran, and also told to go to Prelude Beach. Prelude Beach has a rematch against Kamado and the other legendaries are a bit difficult. You need to stun Cresselia and Hitra and uh, Regigigas is just you need the other place. Of course you also have to talk about as of Mesprea and Yuxi and you have to get your all three to get another plate. After getting them, you're missing one plate. Of course, Volo asks you to come meet him at some... Actually, no wait, that's after. Uh, Miss Gokia asks you to get her f free wood. Volo thinks it's for a plate. And that's not. And it's for a cotton bar. So she gives her. So she gives you her old cotton bar. The fairy plate! <laughs> Which is. Honestly, everyone can agree with Volo. You were using it as a cotton board? What? <laughs> of course, it came. Probably was given to her by Enamorous, the new part of the. Season Quartet, as they're now known, known, which is weird. But, I digress. Follow then ask you to go to the ruins on the Mount, on the Cornet Highlands. You do, and you meet for a, of a broken statue of Giratini. You talk, and Volo says, Giratina might be the holder of the might be the key to seeing Arceus, essentially. So, he asks you to go to the you know, temple. You go there, nothing happens. Volo even laments this. But, then he talks to you. He says, he has last play. Which is great, right? Wrong. Because he reveals that he is willing to do anything to see Arceus. Revealing his true form as one of Sinnoh's oldest tribes. And even says he will do anything for getting to meet Arceus, even injuring you. And then you're forced to battle him. Pokemon Wheeler Volo. Not Trainer, not Ginkgo Gill. Pokemon Wheeler. The exact opposite. Of a Pokemon trainer, there, in my opinion. Of course, you win after basically challenging Cynthia's team minus Milotech plus Ar Arcanine. And then he.
calls for Garatine. Wanting Garatina to kill you. Which makes the fight worse because you're dealing for level 70 legendary with two phases. Because yes, you would fight Altered Form and Origin Form. After you best Garatina, Volo gets mad at it for fleeing. He then gives up and says he doesn't want to be there when you summon Arceus, gives you the last plate, and your Celestica flute turns into the Azure flute. Volo's pissed <laughs> and says he didn't even definitely does not want to see you and that one day he will control Arceus and recreate the world. Doesn't care. Worse is that in before the battle he tells you that he helped Garrity you know, claw its way to make this distortions distortions in this guy and that you ruined his plan of course you can go catch Giratina and Giratina is fine with you catch her with plates which I can show you I believe it's the spooky plate that has it. The other side of this world was given by the origin one to its raging fur. Implying Garrity's ban banishment wasn't too far off today and it was still in rage. But when you be it, it seems to have calmed, which is weird. Of course, after catching all Pokemon, you then go up to Spear Pillar slash Sinner Temple and play the Azure Flute. The Hollow Origin opens. You're given one final task by Arceus itself after this daunting task of having seen all Pokemon caught them. What is that task? Best Arceus in a fight like a noble Pokemon. Arceus does not hold back. It wants you dead. <laughs> or Shall we say, a portion of it? Because Arceus reveals, we never saw its true form. And we are given not only the last play, the legend play, but Arceus reveals that it's sending a portion of it with us. But we're seeing the form. Arceus, right? Wrong. This is where Fury comes in. And I know this is. I shouldn't be talking about Furies. But Arceus with his hands might be in the form we see the horse form. Which also just to show these are the true forms of the origin forms of Palke and Yoga. And this I believe is one of Arceus' hands. Which is pretty scary. Oh yeah. But with that, that is basically 
the story summed up. And all I have to do is finish the Pokedex and that's it. Of course, there's other quests, like the quest for Spirit Tomb and all that, between that, but that's not part of the story. So, yeah, with that, that's everything. So, I, re I reiterate, how do I feel about this game? It's a great game. Does it have faults? Yeah. But those faults... Are honestly not that bad. Any problems they have aren't going to be a big deal. So, with that said, my opinion on Legends Arceus, great game, and honestly, I'm happy that this will be my last main game. I enjoyed it that much. If there's any DLC for it. Will I get it? I don't know. I'll be real. Would it be nice? It'd be nice to eventually see Arceus's true form. Because that's kind of something that a lot of people were expecting considering how much work it takes to be Arceus completely. But that's not here or there. So, that. This is Inazuma signing out, and yeah, this is just a one-off video. I might not put my opinion about games like this again. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how to end this. So, see ya. <laughs>